Welcome to the FlowerSchool.com video library. I'm Leanne Kessler, director of the Floral Design Institute, here to share with you one of my very favorite flowers, the peony, and the care and handling to keep it alive as long as possible. The peony is such a fabulous garden flower. It blooms with dozens of flowers, year after year, so reliably. There's an old myth that goes with the peony, and in fact, I think it's a myth, that a mischievous nymph or nymphs will be hiding down inside. So if you look really closely, you might find a nymph in there, which leads to the Victorian meaning of bashfulness. Yes, the bashful little nymphs, who are quite mischievous, are hiding down in the center. When you purchase a peony, you don't want to look for the most luxurious full bloom. Yes, it's gorgeous, but when they reach this stage, they really only have maybe three or four more days of beauty before they start to fall apart and just shatter all over. So don't buy them at this stage, although that's gorgeous. Mm, smells wonderful too. What you want to look for when you're buying a peony is a very tightly closed ball. Looks almost like a little ping pong ball. It's so tight and hard. That's perfect. The green calyx is still up and over. It's not even necessary to be able to tell what color it is. It could still be solid green. Peonies can be picked very immature like that and then bring them in, put them in water, and watch them bloom out. They're exquisite as they start to open. I have one here I was staging so that you could see. It's a different variety, but I purchased it when it was very tight, like this one, and it's just starting to unfurl those lovely petals opening out. Buy them tight like this. Remove any damaged foliage. You don't remove all of it because the foliage is actually quite pretty. And then, for maximum life, go ahead and cut it under water, removing that lower inch or two of stem, and then transfer it over to a holding vessel. Warm water mixed with flower food. That'll keep the water clean longer and keep the flower happy. Go through and do that with all of your blooms. Real tight and tight, tidy little blooms. Give it a cut and drop it in. Now. If you pick them a little bit later, they'll start to have sugars, nectar on them. And ants love that nectar. And so then you may have ants joining you in the house. Easiest is just to take the bloom and soak it for a little bit. Make sure there's no ants in there. Use cool water. You don't want to be too warm. You don't want to cook them. So tepid, room temperature water, soak them, remove some of that nectar, you'll also find that helps them to open a little more rapidly. Now, I don't do that with all my blooms. I only do it with the ones that may have ants or already have nectar on them. But if I pick them at this stage or purchase them at this stage, chances of ants are slim. So you'll probably be perfectly fine to go ahead and just take off that foliage, give it a cut, drop it in a vessel, and let it drink. Give it a couple of hours before you design, and then work with them and watch them bloom out to the full luxurious bloom. When you design with peonies, they're so glorious all on their own. You don't need much, just a little bit of foliage for interest. And when I design, and if you've taken classes with me, you know that I love to use at least three types of foliage. Something furnish, beautiful umbrella fern, isn't that lovely? But dropping it down in there, I'm going to have to raise that up a little bit. Don't want it to fall in. Just make sure it reaches the water. And then something with a broader leaf, like the Ruscus. I love the contrast between the growth format, the leaf color, the shape, all of that. Just makes it so much more interesting. Radiating them out, roundabout. No real pattern other than all the stems cross from one side of the vase to the other. A little more room here, maybe one more piece down towards the front. And then a grass, so a linear type foliage. Lily grass is so beautiful. And just dropping it in. 
And when you get the three types of foliage, all of a sudden it's so interesting. The design is pretty even before you begin. Now I just need to add my peonies. And as I add these, I've got some that are open, some that are not. I'm going to add the open ones first because they're a little bit fuller. They'll take up more space. Placing them in, radiating from one side of the vessel to the other. Keeping it symmetrical. Then go back with some of the tighter blooms. So that as these fade, the others will just be beginning to open. So it'll give it a little more life. Again, creating that triangle, radiating from side to side. And again. Oh, they're just so grand. It doesn't take any effort when you have flowers this fabulous. Then maybe go back with the more full blooms again, creating another triangle, a little bit closer to the center. And then the tighter blooms, closer to the center. And now that I've got so many stems in the vase, they all support each other, so it stands up just perfectly. And I've got one more open bloom. I think I'm going to scoot it around towards the front where you can enjoy it. And that partial open that I just love. Let's scoot it up here towards the top. And two more buds. Just dropping them into the center where they can fill. Finding a hole. There we go. And then turning it to make sure it's beautiful all the way around. One of the bonus benefits of creating these videos for you is I get a beautiful bouquet to set on my desk and enjoy for the next few days. Oh, what a lucky girl I am. For more creative inspiration, check out our website, flowerschool.com. If you've got questions, want to talk to me about peonies, don't hesitate to give me a call at 1-800-819-8089. If email is easier, use my personal email. It's Leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at floraldesigninstitute.com. I do love to hear from you, and I'd love to see your peony pictures. Have fun, and do something you love.